Big All right, guys, I know we're a little bit early, but uh, we've got a great turnout here tonight, so I think we're just going to go right ahead and get started. Um, first of all, give, you guys, give yourselves a round of applause, because this is the best turnout we've had so yeah, far. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> and this is exactly what we want. We want to keep, uh, keep this show growing and, and keep folks entertained and engaged, and we want you guys to ask questions. You'll get a, a long period of time in which you'll be able to ask questions, so... Um, hold on to your thoughts, concerns, questions, and uh, God forbid complaints. We'll get to those uh, afterwards. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is sort of uh, recap the weekend. We're going to talk to to Coach Thomas and the, the two guests we have on hand here. Um, then we'll open the, the floor up for discussion, for questions, and then we'll basically just recap it and preview the upcoming weekend. Um, Coach, I want to start by uh, addressing uh, the importance from Friday and Saturday night of uh, not because it was such a tight race in the playoff picture with the Fayetteville Marksmen, the Mayhem took all four points available to them. How important was it not only to take all four of those points, but to do so in regulation and prevent Fayetteville from gaining any ground in the playoff picture? Yeah, it's, um, at this time, it's important to, to get away from the pack. You know what I mean? To, every right. point's in, important, and um, to take both games in regulation is obviously huge, and um, the main thing was we actually started playing um, the kind of hockey that I know our, know our team could, and uh, it, was, uh, it was fun to watch. It certainly was, and a big part of that um, fun to watch was uh, the gentleman sitting to your right, Josh Keplinger. He made his professional debut on Thursday, uh, scored the only goal that night. An unbelievable performance uh, by, by Josh, not just that night, but for the rest of the weekend. He'd actually go on to do a whole lot more than just getting that lone goal on Thursday. Um, he did what, exactly what you brought him in to do, but did you picture anything like this happening? Um, honestly, not. Obviously, <laughs> when, uh, when a guy comes in and starts his professional career and has eight points in three games, I don't think you're, you're expecting that, but um, definitely glad that he chose Macon, and uh, we're definitely glad to have him for sure. Yeah, we certainly are. And, and Larry had a big weekend, too, not just defensively, but he got into a, a heated fight with Fayetteville defenseman Paul Frazio, and it, it wasn't even close. He uh, absolutely pummeled him on Friday night. Let's give a round of applause for Larry Smith. <laughs> uh, coach, Frazio is a really close friend of your assistant coach, Ryan Michael, as a matter of fact. Uh, coach Michael coached him last season at SUNY Cortland. What was, uh, what was it like for Mike's watching? Um, I think that got everybody going. Um, <laughs> you know, Smitty's one of those guys who's not very loud talker and kind of quiet and keeps to himself. And, um, you know, obviously a great kid, great teammate. And to watch him uh, step in there and take care of business, um, you could just feel the whole bench erupted. And uh, me and Mike's kind of just looked at each other and started smiling. So, um, <laughs> no, it was, it was great to see Smitty... Uh, do that for sure, and um, you know, Mike's kind of talked to me about it after that he knew the kid. I didn't know that he knew him, so, um, but yeah, it was pretty pretty funny. And uh, Larry, I'm told that was the first fight of your career. Is that correct? Yep, that was the first one. So, <laughs> not too bad. Pretty good one. Yeah, pretty <laughs> not good one. too bad. No, my sources told me that it was in your head that you were just you didn't you weren't thinking about anything. You didn't know what you were doing. You were just gonna throw them hard and throw them fast. And I think you definitely did that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, uh, Coach, uh, this is the last question I have for you, and then I'll uh, get the players involved a little bit more. Uh, yesterday was the SPHL's trade deadline. Uh, you made a huge splash, uh, arguably the biggest splash, uh, bringing aboard Danny Caesar from the Quad City Storm in a three-way deal, which sent Justin Levesque up to the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Um, Caesar's been a productive player in this league for a long time. Uh, give us kind of a scouting report on him, and what role do you expect him to play with the mayhem going forward? Yeah, Danny's, um, you know, he's been in the year, uh, in the league, sorry, for four years or so now. And um, he's just an offensive skilled, very good hockey IQ, um, very good playmaker. So, uh, you know, I think I'm surrounding him with a couple shooters and guys that can hound pucks. So um, I just think he's going to fit our team pretty well. And I'm excited to, to have him here in Macon. And, um, I know he's excited. We've talked on the phone a bunch of times, and um, he seems pretty pretty pumped to be coming to a place and having the chance to make a run at this uh, championship. Yeah, he uh, he played the past four seasons all with Knoxville, um, and earlier this season, I know it seems like a while ago because we haven't played Knoxville in a long time, 
but he was somebody who was, it seemed like I was always getting on the score sheet, always contributing. He had uh, five points in as many games against the Mayhem this season, and three of those were on the power play, which is good news for us. <laughs> um, all right, Josh, I'm going <laughs> to... Sorry, Coach. <laughs> <throw> a job <laughs> <on you>. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, you've been helping the power play a lot out, too, uh, lately. And uh, by the way, folks, uh, I think we should give a round of applause for Josh because he was just officially named as the SPHL's Warrior Player of the Week. I don't think that really came as a surprise to anyone necessarily, but um, yeah, player of the week. Way to go. First week pro, player of the week. Not too shabby. Well deserved. One for one. <laughs> um, so you were up at... <laughs> you know what? I've actually heard the same thing. All right. Um, so Josh, you were up at Lawrence University studying just a couple of weeks ago. Um, Talk about what it was like, you know, signing with the Mayhem, and was that something that you saw coming? How did how did this sort of unfold for you? Yeah, so uh, our season ended at Lawrence a few weeks ago now, uh, and so, you know, I was interested in obviously pursuing a career at the next level, and uh, but still trying to maintain, you know, my schoolwork and everything. And so it was kind of a weird little in between. So I didn't really know what was going on, and I uh, reached out to some teams, and uh, eventually Coach Leo called and said that they wanted to sign me and get me down into Macon and uh, I couldn't have been more excited to get that call and um, so I told him I'd sign and go ahead and come aboard and made the trip down so it was, it was pretty smooth um, and I just knew I wanted to be here so. Awesome well in the, in the short time that you have been here you've been scoring at an unprecedented rate uh, five goals in three games three assists eight points um, now you had it. You were coming off a great senior year at Lawrence, but even there, I was looking through the game log. Even there, you didn't have weekends like this. What have been some of the reasons uh, that you've been able to come in and adjust and adapt to the professional level so quickly? Uh, I think, honestly, a lot of the credit goes to the, the players I've been playing with, my teammates and line mates. Um, you know, playing with John and Jake, they make it pretty easy to you know find open space, and uh, they're obviously elite, skilled players, and they find me and give me the puck in the right situation and I'm just I'm just the monkey you know shooting the gun so that's pretty much what I do and I just shoot the puck and it uh, it's been going in so yeah well I know that this show is called line change but after what your line did on Saturday I don't think coach wants any more line changes anymore for the rest of the year yeah probably not <laughs> <laughs> well when Caesar gets here then yeah maybe <laughs> um all right, uh, Larry, I want to address this next question to you. So you've been, um, this, you're a first-year guy, too. You're also coming off the back of a pretty successful four-season career at, uh, at Niagara University. Um, what have been some of the things, you've been a huge, in my opinion, uh, contributor defensively and a big reason that the Mayhem have improved on the defensive side of the puck so much this season. Um, what have been some of the things that you've learned in adapting from the from the D1 level to the to the pro level that you might be able to share with with Josh here? Um, when D1, it was a lot more. It was a lot. It's a lot faster paced. So I mean, here you have a lot more time to like group up and settle yourself and make make plays and stuff like that. And D1, you kind of had. It's like a. It's like go 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 go. And this is just a lot more slow. It's not a lot more slow paced, but it's. Players are smarter and more better, like positionally, so you have a little more time to make a play. Yeah, and that was something uh, Josh and I spoke in an interview before the game on Friday night, and he told me that that was actually, or I think it was Saturday night. He told me that was something that was helpful for him. It's how well positioned everyone is here. It's almost easier to come in uh, from a different level and, and make the adjustment. Um, so, Larry, you're a big outdoors guy, as I understand yep. it. Um, you know, you've got. Uh, got outdoorsy kind of tattoos um you, you know the teammates your teammates call you big country in the yeah. locker room um and you were injured on camo night of all nights which yeah. must have been devastating yeah, I, I, was, was, I was pretty excited for that <laughs> especially with your parents coming down and everything yeah. like that but you did tell me that uh you were even more excited to uh to play for the for for your country and, and with uh military appreciation weekend coming up on uh, Friday and Saturday of next weekend, is that something that excites you even more than Camo Night? Oh yeah, both they both, they're both awesome nights. Um, we, we the more support the better, because I mean we get to play because of those guys and those women, and so it's just nice to give back as much as we can. 
Absolutely. And those jerseys uh, have been completed. Folks will probably post them on uh, Mayhem social media at some point next week, the uh, Military Appreciation Weekend jerseys. They're looking really nice. We're uh, looking forward to sharing those with you. Um, that's all the questions I have for Coach Thomas, Josh, and Larry. At this time, I'm going to open the floor for discussion. Any folks out there with questions, comments, concerns, complaints, we'd love to hear them. Uh, the floor is yours. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have any brothers? I, I do. I have a younger brother. He's 16. He's actually playing right now. Um, so four years. But, uh, yeah, he's, Three, four years. He's, he's a little ways away. But, uh, yeah, he's got some growing up to do. But maybe he'll be in a mayhem sweater eventually. Hmm. You know what? This was poorly planned. But I've actually got a fifth mic. We're recording this all for our line change. We want to get an archive file. We want to make sure that, that your questions are heard. We've got the fifth mic right here, but no means to transport it. Um, if you guys want to either, that could work. I wasn't, that works. <laughs> um, just pass it around amongst yourselves. The cable should be pretty long, it should be long enough, I believe. Might not be long enough to get all the way to the back. All right. Um, so the only thing I'm going to ask uh, for questions going forward is that you just come up and uh, from this gentleman here, he's got the mic. Just be sure to ask your questions in the mic. Um, anything else? Thank you for your question. Appreciate it. Should be. You can go ahead. So I got a question for Larry. Yes, sir. Are you looking for a nickname now, like Bam Bam or something like that? <laughs> I actually, like, I actually like that one. Yeah. Bam, bam. <laughs> guy, we'll see if we can make that one stick. The guys, the guys, <laughs> like, the guys in the locker room like to call him Smitty, uh, so I know Smitty's kind of a little nickname, Lair. It's kind of normal. But, I'm thinking yeah. Bam Bam after yeah. Bam Bam. Nice. Big Country's a new one, too. Never had that one before. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like that one. I don't want that one to go anywhere. <laughs> All right, uh, so my question is for Josh. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had kind of an interesting journey here, going from being a captain on in your senior season, you know, playing all four years there, to all the way down here where you don't know anyone in the locker room, you're the new guy again. And what, what has that experience kind of been like, and uh, how has that kind of impacted, you know, the short time you've been here with us? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it's definitely an adjustment going from a situation where uh, you know, you're responsible for leading the team and kind of steering the ship in the right direction. Uh, and then down here, my role was to just come in and try to produce offensively and, um, you know, get used to my line mates and be a high energy guy and not as much of a leader. Um, I still think I can bring some of the leadership qualities I learned at school uh, from my senior year to here. And I think that could only help us. Um, but... Yeah, my role here is a little bit different than there, so it has been in a little adjustment. So. <laughs> all right, so, so close to that hat trick the other night. We were all hoping for it. What else, what was going through your mind um, in those last couple minutes of the game? Uh, well, I was gassed, um, <laughs> and coach threw me out there in the last two minutes of the game to try to get me a hat trick. and. Uh, I can't say I was mad because I you know, want to be on the ice as much as possible, but um, I mean, we had the power play late in the game and you know, we were up and you know, you, you want to score, but at the end of the day, you just want to get the win and the two points and that was what's most important for us. And you know, whether we won 6-1 or 5-1, to one, it didn't really mean that much to me and getting that hat trick wasn't the first thing on my mind, it was winning. So uh, I'm sorry I couldn't make it happen, but uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I might have jinxed him, though, because I remember kicking him on his butt <laughs> and saying, just go finish it with the two minutes left. So I could have. Yeah. It's probably my fault. Blame it on me. And I, I probably jinxed it, too, by saying he might get a hat trick on the air. That's what. So it's not happens. even really my fault, then. It's yeah. these guys' faults, right? <laughs> mm hmm Yep. I knew that second one coming into the season. I've come to learn the first one. I've come to learn not to say hat trick. <laughs> and I think I've jinxed Trask at least four times this season. <laughs> he probably hates me. Don't worry about the hat trick. We'll take two goals a game. No problem. 
Yeah, that's that, yeah. No pressure or anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> this question is for Coach. So obviously there's an A that's come off of Jersey, um, and I was just curious if you could talk about how the leadership is changing on the team towards the end of the season. Um. The reason that one came off, um, the third A, when, when Sumi got called up, I planned on, um, we call it like a floating A, so it was going to go from maybe a different guy or different players throughout the rest of the season. So, um, you know, I decided to go with Urban first when he came back from Toledo and had a, con had a conversation with him about it and um, kind of told him what my plan was and he was the first guy to that was going to wear it. So um, I do have close to a decision on who it's going to go to next. Um, but yeah, the, the leadership's been the same. I, I still have Trask and Seymour with the other two. And um, my plan was just have this third one floating around until Sumalitis got back. So. When, when am I going to show you who the third assistant is, or when is Sue Miletus coming back? <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll see. Um, we'll see. I, I'm in contact with Sue Miletus all the time, and um, that's the thing where he's up there. He's in the East Coast. He deserved it. He's worked hard for it. Um, so I wish him all the best. Um, I, I know that the team he's playing for is – not in the playoff picture right now, so that's kind of a good thing for us. So. If you were to return tomorrow, do you reunite the AAA line or do you keep things the way they are? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> right now, I honestly couldn't switch up that line. Um, I do have some ideas, though, for when if and when Sumi came back, and I'm very... Uh, very excited about the lines that I could put together. So, mm -hmm. yep. So is Sean. Sean put together a whole makeshift line on the fan page. It's pretty <laughs> makeshift pretty lineup. Uh, it was looking pretty enticing. Sorry for making you work out here, Sean. Okay. Is there any specific reason why nobody has a seat? Um, that's a good question too. Not like really a specific reason. I just, you know, a captain's got to do a lot of responsibilities. There's a lot of stuff away from the rink. There's a lot of stuff while you're playing kind of thing. And, um, you know, over the last couple of years, you guys have seen the captains we've had. They've been guys that have played, you know, numerous, numerous pro years or, and stuff like that. So. Um, coming into this year, um, I know I, th I think I answered this a couple weeks ago. I thought, I figured I'd have a captain by now maybe, but, you know, it just hasn't worked out that way. Um, but I'm still, you know, happy with our leadership group. That doesn't mean I don't have a captain in the room. I've got plenty of guys who step up and, and, and lead the team. So um, I just know when I have that feeling of who, who it should be, then they'll, they'll get to see. Thank you. We don't have the budget for a wireless mic just yet. We'll get there. <laughs> I was wondering if Coach could talk to us a little bit about Clutch's suspension last week, because some of us were kind of wondering how that happened. Yeah, that was a weird one. Um, you know, watching video and watching him him take a punch first and then all he did was kind of defend himself and, um, you know, for him to get one game and the other kid not to get one, it is it is what it is. It was out of my out of my control. I said my piece with the league and um, told them what I thought and what I thought was fair or what it should have been fair, but um, I'm happy that it was only one game. He's already sat his game and it wasn't uh, multiple games, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, it was something that happened quick, and I'm glad that it was only one game and we got him back for this weekend.
to build off of that a little bit, um, going from Friday's very active game <laughs> right. to Saturday, can you tell us a little bit of sort of what you said to the guys to get them ready before um, Saturday's Saturdays? Saturdays, yeah. It was, um, you know, I went in there just tried to tell them what, what happened the night before happened. I, I'm glad that you guys stuck together. That meant everything. And I think it was good for our whole team in our room. And I'm glad that you guys stuck up for each other and didn't back down. But uh, Saturday was more of we just need to come out, play a hard game. Let's not worry about the refs. Let's not worry about no calls. Let's play a good full 60 minutes and get these two points and, and enjoy the days off. And uh, that's exactly what they did. I think that was the, probably the best game we've played um, in a long time, So, or if not the whole season. So um, the guys responded well, and uh, we did what we needed to do and get those, get those points. I have a question then for Larry. So I'm also from Buffalo and looking at your hockey DB a little bit, you've played mostly in that region, a little bit in Canada and stuff. Mm. And then you came to Pensacola for a little bit. You were here for a little bit last season and didn't make the playoff roster. And now you're arguably one of the most valuable defensemen to this team. If not in the league, you were an SPHL all-star. Congrats on that, by the thank way. You, thank you, thank uh, you. So I have two parts to this. First. What is it like going from a city in Buffalo to here? Because having now lived in both, I can t say it's, it, the cultures are very different. Yeah. And what happened kind of over that summer of going from not making the playoff roster to now being an all-star? What do you think helped that change? Um, probably just, I know, I mean, I came here late last year, but if you, you kind of get released from any team, it kind of gives you like a little fire. So I... I definitely wanted to play here because I liked it here as soon as I got here. Um, the weather's nice. Um, people are very nice. Fans were awesome. Um, it just gives you a little fire to work a little harder and make the team and show that you can play. So that's kind of what I try to focus on over the summer. And it's worked out. And I've just kind of been working on being consistent and pretty much keeping the puck out of our net. So that's, that's my job. And that's the only thing I really care about doing on this team. And I'm just going to keep doing it. And then the second part, that uh, was the second part, but first part, um, <laughs> uh, it's a lot, well, the weather for sure. Obviously, it's a lot nicer here. Um, but the, the culture is, everyone's like a tight. In Buffalo, it's kind of this, I mean, it's a little the same, you know, in some areas, some parts, but I feel like everyone here is like super close and super tight, like almost like a f full family. Back at home, it's a little the same for sure, but definitely not as much as here. So. There's a question for Coach Leo and then also Larry, since you've been with the team the whole season here. In the first half of the season, where we've had enormous success and stayed in first place for a while to, to go with a little bit of slump and going into the end of the season with a lot of changes and possibly the roster and the lineup and preparing for the finals, how have you adjusted your strategy or just your mental game for, for the course of the season? Yeah, I know it's um, a lot of ups and downs, obviously, during the season. And um, you're expected of that. A lot of things happen, um, call ups injuries um so the mentality now is we we've gotten through that little rough patch and um we started march off pretty well like i've been telling the guys and it's just all about maintaining that and just taking each day at a time and getting better every day from now on and um hopefully you stay healthy <clears throat> you know you, you also got um players coming out of college if you need to to add a few things and um you know, that's that's a part of my job that, that gets tough. Um, obviously, if a guy's been here all year and, um, you know, you get a kid in from college or something who can help, you know, off the bat, or um, those are decisions you got to make if he's going to push you over that edge in playoffs and, and stuff like that. So, um, but for right now, I think um, mentally and as a team, we're in a good spot. Um, you know, we're, we're making playoffs. Um, it's just all about being consistent now, leading into playoffs and going with a, with a lot of momentum and doing things the right way. Speaking of uh, bringing kids out of college, Coach, um, last season the team did something similar 
uh, this to what they did this season, which has brought in Dylan Van Der Esch late towards the end of the year. Um, you were an assistant coach at the time under Kevin Kerr. You got to see Dylan Van Der Esch play. A lot of people have compared him actually to Josh. Um, do you see similarities there? Do those claims have some merit? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, you know, when you're doing this recruiting po- process, and uh, you're getting to learn, you know, the types of players these guys, these guys are, and these players are. You try to inject them in a lineup that you think is going to be successful in the playoffs. And, um, you know, when I was talking with Josh's coach in college and um, a lot of the people that know both of us um, or that know him too and that I talked to a lot um, told me Josh is a shooter. He gets to the right places. And um, that's one thing that I knew I could use in this lineup. And um, he's obviously... Proved, <laughs> proved, <laughs> proved that right this weekend, and, mm-hmm. and it's played unbelievable for us so far. So I'm glad that worked out, and I want to go off Smitty too because um, I got to talk about Josh earlier, not Smith, but Larry Smith's been the most improved player by far um, that I've seen from last year. Um, this kid's this kid's been un- unbelievable for us in the back end, and he's playing uh, he's playing great hockey for us. So. I just decided I needed to talk to talk about Smitty there for a while <laughs> instead of talking about Josh here this whole night. So I uh, got to give Smitty a little bit of respect, and, uh, and I'm proud of the game he's playing right now. And he just needs to continue to do the same thing. And um, he's like I said, he's been playing great hockey. So. Anything else, guys? Oh, they're whispering something. That can't. Uh, no. That can't. That can't be good. Better be for the player. Yeah, that cannot guys, be good. You guys are probably tired of hearing me talk. talk uh, so we know you're great at hockey, but uh, what songs are you listening to this week? <laughs> okay. Oh, what's on their playlist? <laughs> Uh, I listen to pretty much anything country, so that's about all I listen to. Um, couldn't really give you a specific song, but yeah, country's always playing for me. So Yeah, I, I would agree as well. Um, in the car, it's country. In the locker room, it's a little different because some guys like to play uh, a little bit different music. I know we have some characters in the room who... Uh, some guys like EDM, so like, uh, you know... Upbeat uh, dance music, pretty much electronic dance music. The opposite um, of country. The opposite, yeah. correct. Yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> some guys like Lovey like to play a little bit of rap and hip hop from time to time. So that definitely yeah. comes into the speakers too. So. Baby Shark has not hit the speakers yet. Uh, yeah. Not yet. Coach loves his hip hop too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a big big hip hop fan, so <laughs> And the baby shark. <laughs> Little off topic. So how did your son do at his hockey game? Oh, he did um they finished third in the tournament. Um he did well though. He uh he ended up scoring the winning goal with twelve oh. seconds left, I think, so um Okay. That was um, that was a special thing. Um, I know, not to get all personal and stuff, but um, you know, when I was young, my dad wasn't around. I kind of had my older brother taking me to the hockey rinks and stuff like that. So um, I'm glad that I got to make that trip, and I'm glad um, you know Ryan was able to handle stuff for me, and and the players understood. Um, I was happy I was able to get back from for that special weekend and um, you know every all the kids parents were there fathers and moms were there so um, I'm glad that I was able to get back there for him and be there for him so um, it was a special weekend for sure or day day or two is it true that Blair was on the bench yeah I did, yeah Blair was on the bench mm-hmm. yeah he did a pretty I, I didn't good find job that out there. till Monday but. <laughs> what was your reaction Hey, we lost, so uh, <laughs> blamed him. Hey, hey Leo, any time that you want to just hop on a plane and go away, um, 
I'll step in. You'll step in. Well, <laughs> oh, that's the thing. I, that's something I don't want to do all the time. <laughs> you know, that's probably a one-time thing where, you know, it, uh, family is kind of a, really important to me and my son. So, But that's something I don't, I'm not just going to jump on a plane and leave my team here. So, um, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, Larry, did Mike's continue to run the D, or did Blair run the D and Mike's ran the fools? Um, How did that work? It was a little, little bit of both. Blair okay. was just kind of telling guys to go, or who to go, who's up next, stuff like that. He did a pretty good job. Oh, so. okay. Nice. <laughs> I actually had a question for Leo. Uh, so, in the Birmingham game, there was a time in which uh, Seamer drew a, sl uh, a hooking call, and we got Silvis to the bench and had a six on five for a second. And then the whistle blew, and I was curious because it looked like they were trying to whistle for an offside, but I, it wasn't really clear. And it looked like they came over and talked to you. Is that what? I can't even remember this right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember actually. We had full we had full possession, six on five, and we had control of the puck, and the refs blew the whistle for some reason, and I didn't know, even know it was offsides at the time, and then it. I, it, that was just what I was curious if you remember what the explanation given was for the whistle because it was it was not an offside so that was my well, only that, I'm sure you've been to a lot of our games and SP games and that happens a lot so um, I honestly like I don't know if I'm drawing a blank but I don't even remember that, <laughs> that play that's kind of not good <laughs> I don't remember his explanation if that, but I do, rem like, now that you guys are talking about, I remember the offside, or they were saying it's offside, but um, at that point, I was probably really frustrated anyway, and just said some nice things to him and told him to get away from me. So you say you were still taking classes while you're down here? Yeah. How's yeah, that working out? I'm still in school. Uh, so before I came down here, I had to make sure that taking online classes were okay with all my professors. Uh, and so I had to go around and make sure that I was going to still be able to graduate this spring if I, had, if I had done this and moved away from campus. And so uh, it was actually kind of a bigger ordeal than I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting them to just say, yeah, okay, go ahead. And... There was a little bit more work involved, but uh, they, they were actually really great. Uh, they, let me, they let me take my stuff that I needed to get done online, and then um, I'll have to go back in the spring after our season's over to finish up school and then graduate in June. So, Sorry? I'm a biology major. <laughs> Like, we should have had the whole room guess first. That could have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably all I, I saw you signed a new defenseman to an amateur contract today. Is there anyone else you're looking at for right now? Um, right now, he's the only um, guy that we have coming in or here um, that will be going on this trip with us. Um, so he, he, he'll be in the lineup Friday. Um, he'll be actually in the lineup for both days probably just so I can get a look at him and um, we haven't had practice here the last day or two, so um, I'll see him. Uh, he'll get good uh, Wednesday and Thursday practice so I can see and uh, get him in the lineup right away and kind of see how he does over the weekend. All right, so Larry, what was your major? Criminal justice. <laughs> I'm sorry? Criminal justice. Mm. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I could, def I could see that for yeah, sure, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Big country, man. <laughs> That's right. You think uh, a law degree might be in the, in the works in the future after, after hockey's over? Yeah, I want, to, I want to be a game warden eventually. Oh, so nice. if anybody who doesn't know that is, it's just like a cop in the woods pretty much. So <laughs> it's right up my alley. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's uh, what Ron Swanson was from Parks and Rec <laughs> at the end. You know who that is, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, that looks like a dream job, by the way. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else?
All right. Well, we uh, really appreciate your questions, guys. These have been great. Um, you've been a, an unbelievable crowd. Uh, we hope that every line change show going forward has a crowd like this. Um, it's been a lot of fun for us. Uh, I'm just going to ask a few more questions for Coach uh, to preview the upcoming weekend, and we'll let you guys be on your way. Uh, feel free to mingle, hang out, uh, talk to the guys. Um, they'll, they'll all get a free meal out of this, so they wouldn't dare miss that, so they'll be around. Um, <laughs> Coach, uh, Crown Coliseum this weekend, it's the last time we're going up there to Fayetteville. We saw how hostile things can get with these guys. That was only the first out of four back-to-back -back games against them on Friday when there were a combined 96 penalty minutes. Um, now we're heading up there. What kind of weekend can we expect? Um, two teams battling for positions in the standings, so it's going to be a battle. Um, they've got a few guys back that uh, were called up. Um, so they'll, they'll have a kind of different lineup there too. Um, but I don't know, I'm expecting playoff hockey from here on out. Um, mm. So it's just going to be tough battles. You're going to have to fight for every inch on the ice and um, should be uh, should be some fun fun times. That's right. And speaking of getting a couple guys back, they're actually going from two goaltenders who won't be or who weren't here at all on Saturday to two goaltenders. They're, they're top two goaltenders. They're getting one guy back from the ECHL and then Dylan Kelly back from suspension. Their emergency backup, in case you guys didn't know this, on Saturday was Mark Maxwell, who's Spectra's director of finance at the Macon Centerplex. I think he's like, he's like 36, 37 years old, and he's never played a game of hockey in his life, I want to say. Um, yeah, we had him. We, we, had, had, him, we had him the one yeah, time, too. We had him as an emergency <laughs> goaltender at one point this year, too. Um, now, Coach, you talked about Dakota Kletcha coming back from suspension to play on Friday. Is Alexander Tallin back in the lineup? No. Um, Tallinn got a total of three games, so he will be sitting um, both games in Fayetteville. Him and also the goalie from Fayetteville got three games combined. So. Oh, okay. So it kind of evened out. Uh, right. Yeah, so he'll be back uh, the following week, but he won't be making the trip with us this weekend. Okay, okay. so my mistake, Dylan Kelly won't be back uh, for Friday and Saturday. Um, all right, last question for you, Coach. Uh, this is big news, folks. If the Mayhem win on Friday night, they will officially clinch a playoff berth for the fourth consecutive season. What does that mean to you in your first year as a head coach? I mean, that's huge. That's, that's why I'm here. It um, would be a huge accomplishment, obviously, but the ultimate goal is um, to bring the, bring the cup back, back to Macon. So... Um, you know, that's, that's huge, Joe. We want to get it done right away. I don't want to wait till Saturday. Um, I might as well get that, get that done Friday and um, go from there. And like I said earlier, just keep building and um, bring that nice shiny thing back to make it. So. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, that's all we have for tonight, folks. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. You guys have been great. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.